Now let me tell you one more interesting thing based on which I will justify one more thing around this notion that your algorithm should be independent or your measurement of how good the algorithm is working should be independent of the hardware that you are using. Okay. So let's say this is a simple piece of loop. In any language you can write this loop C++, Java, Python, JavaScript. This is a JavaScript file. But in any language just write this loop. Okay. A simple loop or something else if you want to write. So now let me just run this code. Let me just run this piece of loop in front of you. Now you can see I have not printed anything. Let me just print it very quickly. Console dot now end. Okay. Now if I run this code, you can see it prints end and it printed in 0 0.05 seconds. Looks good. Okay. I am not making any change to the code. I am literally not making any change to the code. Let me run it again. Do you see? the time taken to execute the same piece of code that I didn't even change is now different. Let me do it once again. This time, the time is same as the second time. Okay, let's do it again. This time it is again different. See, every time almost that we run the code, the time taken to execute the code, which is just a simple for loop is different. Why is that? What is going on here? And it's not something that is just going to be with JavaScript. Any language that you are going to use is going to behave in the same way. Because there is a very interesting fact that is hidden behind how computer handles your process execution that we are going to talk about. Now let's try to understand what actually goes on. So in modern computers, you must have heard about this term called as multitasking. Right. It's a very common term and a lot of people technically use it. But technically there is nothing like multitasking that happens in the computer. If I talk with respect to just a single core, you know right that in, in uh, CPUs there are multiple cores. For example, octa core system, hexa core system, quad core system, right? There are multiple cores. If I just talk about a single core of the CPU, there is nothing like multitasking that actually goes behind the scenes. There is nothing like multitasking. Like if let's say if you assume that my current computer is only having one single core, then there is no multitasking that is going on. Then what happens actually? What happens? So technically, when your CPU has to execute some tasks, when your CPU has to execute some tasks, that task can be some internal task or some internal process that task can be dependent on some input output from the user also right so what actually cpu does is cpu maintains something like a queue what is a queue if you don't know about a queue queue is just like you stand in a line right you stand in a queue of for buying a ticket for buying a product or something it's something like that so there is something like a queue that is maintained something like a queue that is maintained right what cpu actually does is let's say there are multiple process let's say there are three process process p1 process p2 process p3 so it's not like process p1 is getting executed parallel to process p2 and parallel to process p3 no in a single core of a cpu this thing doesn't exist if there are multiple cores then in one core there can be a process and parallel to that in the other core there can be other process but if you just talk about a single core system nothing like parallel execution actually works what happens is what happens is let's say the cpu has to execute multiple process for example it has to execute chrome also maybe i am trying to execute some javascript code let's say there is some ms paint opened or some text editor opened right there are multiple processes what cpu does is what cpu does is it picks a process it picks a process right Let's say it will pick process P3. It will pick process P3, right? And what, what it will do is, it will just execute some part of process P3. It will just execute some part of process P3, right? Let's say there were like 100 instructions. I'm just giving you some random number. Let's say there were total 1000 instructions that were expected to be done for executing the process P3. Let's say your computer will only do around 500 
or let's say even less than that let's say 300 right let's say your cpu will just execute 300 instructions at one point of time and then what it will do is what it will do is it is going to send the process p3 in a waiting state so see you have some partially executed swapped out process swap in swap out swap, what is swap out swap out means cpu has executed some instructions and it will just throw it out of the current execution flow and this process p3 is now going to wait here this is kind of like a wait waiting area this is kind of like a waiting area right p3 is going to wait here and then cpu can pick some other task let's say cpu picks p2 cpu picks p2 inside p2 let's say there were 5000 instructions that were ex expected to be executed cpu just executed let's say 800 of them it's not like it will always execute same number of instruction for everyone no so let's say this time it executed 800 instructions for p2 and then it is going to send p2 also in the waiting area right then let's say it picks p1 let's say it picks p1 does the same thing for p1 right and then when everything is now in the waiting area then maybe it will pick something from the waiting area now let's say it will again pick see from this waiting area it will try to swap in again swap in means it's now going to pick something inside my queue so let's say first it will pick again p3 but then p1 and then p2 so it will again come back to this queue kind of a thing then again let's say it picked for example p2 this time why right let's say it again executed something like p2 this time then let's say it executed thousand more instructions for p2 then it will again send p2 in the waiting area which will later come in the queue and let's say this time it starts executing p3 for p3 let's say it executed all of the remaining instruction and p3 is done right these things happen and then let's say in between this all of this execution you as a user gave some input let's say you put a keystroke like for example some mouse click or some keystroke some kind of input you gave in some way so that input is also going to be processed like that instruction is also going to go inside the ready queue which will be later picked by cpu if there are multiple instructions so it might execute some of them and then send them back in the waiting area and why cpu does this because a single core cannot execute everything parallelly just think about it if you are sitting at your home you are doing the dinner then if somebody asks you that during your dinner you have to read a book and you have to watch a movie and do the dinner also at same instance of time like at the let's say at 10 48 pm exactly this 48th second 48th minute and let's go even precise let's say at 10 48 uh, pm and let's say 35th second at the current 35th second do you think at the same point of time you are eating also you are reading the book also and you are watching the tv also you as a human can you do all the three things parallelly at one instance of time let's say at one some some millisecond or some second are you technically doing everything parallelly no right same thing with cpus that this core this single core is something like it's a way to process to uh, process some data to process some instruction it cannot process multiple things it is not having the capability to do something parallelly the parallel capability actually comes when there are multiple cores or there is a concept called as thread that something like that gets executed right or there are some other ways also in which people generally handle this but at one point of time a single core can only execute one instruction from one process but the main thing is modern cpus are so fast like even a dual core or a i3 is so fast that in one second in one second a cpu can execute approximately 10 raised to the power 8 instructions sometimes even more than that in one second they can execute 10 raised to the power 8 instructions now just think about it if let's say they get three process and total these three process have got just 10000 instructions this is nothing compared to the cap capability of the cpu right cpu can execute 10 raised to the power 8 in one second 
you are barely giving it what 10000 or 1000 or something so it's nothing in for, nothing for the computer so what actually computer does is in one second it has the capability to execute 10 raised to the power 8 instructions so what it does is it executes some instructions from one process very quickly put it to the waiting area picks another process execute something very quickly puts it there and this process happens so fast that we feel like it's actually multitasking right that is why that is why and i told you right when it is picking a process it's not like it is going to execute same number of instructions every time see p3 got instructions executed 300 let's say p2 got 800 because how many instructions it is going to execute depends on multiple things for example let's say p2 is a high priority task now in cpu or your computer also there are some high priority tasks for example if the cpu will not execute this task very quickly then the whole system can crash let's say there is a task that maintains the overall uh, i would say operating system somehow and if you will not very constantly execute that task your cpu can crash your os can crash then it's a very high priority task right it's a high priority task that means it needs to execute faster it needs to get the chance first let's say everything is now in the waiting area which process to pick there are multiple ways in which you can pick a process let's say what which the process that went to the waiting area first is the most waiting process you should pick that but maybe there is a high priority process then you will pick that high priority process first right because even if the other process are waiting the cpu is not going to crash but if this process is going to wait for a long time cpu can crash so there can be processes that are of higher priority then the other processes are going to wait right that's why when your process is going to be picked up when the instructions are going to be executed how many instructions are going to be executed when you get a chance here you can never determine that is why when i run the when i run a for loop or I, when i run a piece of code when i run a code you don't you know that right your program gets converted to a process that means it get loaded in the ram and its instructions start getting executed in the cpu now when your program or when your process is going to get a chance to get executed in this whole cycle how many number of times how many instructions in one cycle it is able to execute a lot of factors are there to determine how much time your process is going to take see earlier it was fast so most probably it got the chance earlier this time it was a bit slow so with respect to the other processes it got the chance a bit slower right sorry this was faster 240 046 was fast faster 0.232 was slower right so in the previous turn it got uh, the chance very late but it is 0.232 seconds we don't even feel it we don't even feel it right even if it takes 2 seconds we won't be most probably feeling it right it's so fast it takes 0.039 second but it is still so fast right so our uh, we as humans we feel that the computer is actually doing multitasking because 10 raised to the power 8 instructions is huge this is a huge number that a computer can handle and mostly even if you get an m1 system or maybe you get a core to door system this number is going to be approximately same this number is approximately going to be same for a single core always i to say with respect to a single core when there are multiple cores involved and let's say there is a very huge generation gap like if you go for uh, uh some microprocessors which are like 8080 8085 those very old microprocessors and then you start comparing them with m1 pro or m1 then there will be a drastic change there can be some drastic change maybe they are only able to handle 10s per 6 instruction because they are extremely old like generations old but if you just compare i5 and m1 then this number is going to be approximately same right in one second your computer can execute these many instructions right that is why we feel like everything is going quite parallelly but actually it's not with respect to a single core yes if there are multiple cores then in every core this same thing happens parallelly so in every core there is a ready queue every core is technically a cpu process uh, cpu that can process your instructions so if there are multiple cores then there is actual parallel processing going on but if there is a single core then technically there is no parallel multitasking that is going on. this is why we cannot rely on analyzing an algorithm based on machines because even if you have a fast machine 
and you analyze both the algorithms on the same machine there can be a case that your algorithm 2 was better than algorithm 1 but it got the chance of execution in cpu late right and every time it used to get a chance only very less instructions were getting executed because maybe there's some there was some higher priority task that came up that is why analyzing your algorithms based on a particular machine is the worst way that you can go for because if i ask you to analyze it like this what you will do you will write two algorithms and you will just measure the time of execution the best that you can do is take 10 or 100 readings and take an average out of it but still it doesn't make sense because it can be extremely late also right this kind of analysis is called as experimental analysis what is experimental analysis in experimental analysis we actually try to see how much time the algorithm is taking to execute and then only we execute it right and based on that we actually make the decision on which algorithm to pick which algorithm not to pick but this experimental analysis where you actually see the time taken that's not the best way to go for now we understood now we understood that what actually it is going to take in order to uh, do experimental analysis and it's not that great it's this thing is not that great right so what to do now like what to do now one thing that i can definitely say is one thing that i can definitely say is let's say if my zomato's application has to process let's say 1000 restaurants let's say there are 1000 restaurants that my zomato application has to process and later after some time or let's say after few days the data increased and using the same algorithm we are going to you we are going to like rearrange the data in zomato's app and let's say this time the number of restaurants increased to something like 10 raised to the power 5 if you are using the same algorithm then increasing the size of the data is definitely going to affect the algorithm right it is definitely going to affect the algorithm it is definitely going to increase the time required can i say that right if you have to do the same task on the same machine with the same algorithm and considering that your input is going to change then definitely somehow the time is going to be affected so one thing that we can definitely infer that input and different properties of the input that what is the input size of the input right how input is given in different ways input directly affects input directly affects the course of algorithm execution right this is something very evident and based on this we are going to decipher something 